If you're serious about making money with your desktop CNC, then it's really important that you come up with a strategy on how to sell the things that you make. Today I want to share what makes a great selling product and how to actually sell that product. The best selling products on the market, no matter what you're selling, either are emotional or functional. Let me explain. So let's start with emotional products. What do I mean when I say emotional products? It kind of sounds like a soap opera a little bit. But what I mean is it's a product that makes you feel or remember something. These purchases a lot of times are emotional purchases or impulse buys. They elicit some emotion from the buyer. Some examples of where this happens are uh, destinations, places, on vacation. You think about all the trinkets and t-shirts and everything that's sold on vacation. It's typically not because of the item's quality, as most of these items are very low quality, but they are, uh, People want to remember. People want to remember the time they had on vacation. They want to remember the time they visited the Grand Canyon. They want to remember the time they went to a local market with their family and it was a great day. So they buy everybody something to remember that time. Another common scenario where emotional purchases happen are when someone personally wants to remember something. You see this a lot with military, whether it be um, making flags or bourbon barrel with um, different branches of the military carved into them. People want to hang that up on their wall and remember that time in their life, but also um, they're part of something bigger than themselves. It could also be uh, clubs. I'm part of a club, and so it's kind of a, a thing on the wall, but that is emotional inside. It doesn't serve a purpose other than to look good and to remind somebody of something that's important to them. All right, so that is emotional products. What are some functional products. Now, as you can imagine, functional products have a function. Uh, the person purchasing them, it isn't so much of a emotional purchase. It is a logical purchase where they can see themselves using what you're selling. For example, cutting boards. The reason there can be a million bajillion cutting boards made out there is because people can see themselves using them. So they're usually an easy sell. The next example that comes to mind is furniture. Building furniture, whether that's tables or chairs, uh, end tables, uh, bar tops. These are things that get used um, that are functional. They serve a purpose. Quickly, I want to tell you about the guide that I made specifically for people that are just getting started creating products and selling them for the first time. This step-by-step -step PDF guide will help you get the ball rolling on where to start, what steps to take on creating your first product. If you're interested, check out the link in the description for more information. So now that we've identified these two types of products, how can we go about selling them? I mean, it's one thing to make one of these items and it's another to sell them. There are two really important things that go into selling these products successfully. One is price point, and two is your target, your audience. Who are you making it for? Let's break down price point first. This is a very big topic and it can go a lot of different ways. But for the sake of giving you a straight answer, because I know that's what you want, in general, emotional products are less expensive and functional products are more expensive. Someone is a lot more likely to pull $20 out of their pocket than they are 200 or 2000. On the function side, you don't need as many sales of functional items to make the same revenue with emotional items. Now, I'm categorizing here very generally and there's things that crisscross when it comes to price. But in general, emotional purchases are impulse purchases are typically less expensive than functional purchases. So what does this mean for your products? I would say to focus on small, less expensive emotional purchases and larger, more expensive functional pieces. The second thing that goes into selling these items successfully that is often overlooked, people usually stop at price point, but this one is just as, if not more important than price point. And that is, who are you creating this product for? A lot of times as artists, as creators, we just make something and then we want to sell it. But we had we made it with something that we like and we think it looks cool, but then no one else ends up thinking it's cool. So when you're creating either an emotional product or a functional product, think about the person, the actual avatar, like th picture somebody that you're creating it for. The more specific you can get with this person and create a product for something that they would like, the easier sales will be. The goal is, is that you create a product at a certain price point for someone that says, wow, you created that just for me. I need that. So we created a product for a specific person. 
Now we need to get that product where that specific person is in front of them. Not just putting it up on Etsy and hoping the right person walks by. Those are very passive ways to sell, which are okay if that's in your goals, but you can be a lot more direct and you can be a lot more intentional. So think of some ways you can be intentional. I've got a friend who lives in um, an area where they have a covered bridge festival. And so he's going through the process of coming up with products at a certain price point for the people that are gonna be at this covered bridge festival that happens every year. He already has the place, he's gonna be there. So now he's identifying the people that are gonna be there and what they'll like. Most likely this is gonna be an emotional purchase. They wanna remember the time they went to that festival. With functional purchases, it's really, really, really important that you take pictures or if you're at a live show to set things up and stage things to help people picture the item being used. Rather than just setting all your cutting boards out and taking pictures of them even though they may be beautiful, they'll go a lot further if you place some items on them and stage them and take pictures or like I said, at a live event, you stage one of them. Really help people see how they're gonna use it and that will lead to more success and more sales. One thing I will add is that these two categories of emotional and functional are not mutually exclusive. If you can create a product that has a function and also can create some kind of an emotional attachment, those are the products that are gonna sell the best. Think about a cutting board. The way to, it has a function, it may be beautiful, but it has a function, doesn't remind anybody of really anything, but if you can engrave a family name on it, oh man, the power of that coupled with a function there you go. That's why engraved cutting boards do really well and so many people can sell them. Kids, grandkids, and pets. If you think about those three areas, people, including myself, spend a lot of money on those three areas. So there's a lot of opportunity there to sell things. The other thing is, is they're emotional purchases. They're not logic purchases. So in order to take advantage of this, we need to take our products where people are making those purchases. If you wanna see more success in selling the things that you make, create a functional product that makes somebody feel something at the appropriate price point and get it in front of the person that you created it for, you will find that these become your best selling items. Check out the links in the description below if you're interested in my digital guide on how to get started selling the things that you make. If you wanna learn more about my CNC business and all the videos I made on that topic, check out this playlist right here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.